Yeah, this is my meltdown face. <laughs> um, right. Uh, okay. Um, well, I've, I've been putting a thing off for a long time, and uh, I bought a. I've had. I have batteries, um, and I bought this battery watering device. Watering batteries, not plants. Um, this week and I've just looked at the Trojan Battery Corporation uh, instructional video and uh, I need to establish whether or not I've still got some batteries basically. Um, I bought these batteries in 2013 on the advice of the man in the boat chandlery that no longer exists in Abingdon that Red Line cruises. And he said to me, oh well, these modern batteries, they're not the same as those proper batteries that you can, you know, you've got water in. And Right, so, um, I got these. And these actually, I, I, <laughs> I got this size of battery because it fitted in the four peak cushion area. Um, between where the, where the space is there, but I don't want them there, um, so the width of them is irrelevant, actually. So what they are, um, Trojan 8 volt golf cart batteries. And these are full of water. I shan't do it next, I've got my gloves and everything on, so they've got water in them. And the maintenance, and they've been charged up. They've had a, you know, rather expensive. These are two hundred and seventy-five pound. These charges. Um, it's been charged with that to the regulation, much higher than normal charge level. Um, on and off. I mean, not all the time, certainly. And they've run down self discharge quite a lot. And the twelve volt battery that I've got in the other room is. The self discharge on that seems to be extraordinary. Um, anyway, the uh, the Trojan website says that the batteries should be equalised, so that means overcharged. Quite is that when you overcharge a flooded battery, which is battery with water in, not a absorbed glass mat or gel or valve regulated or maintenance free. These are main batteries that to be maintained. They last longer, the man said. Um, uh, overcharge, they release hydrogen when you charge them. When you overcharge them, they bubble with hydrogen. And that mixes the acid inside the box, inside the battery, um, and stops it from stratifying. So, um, lighter, I think, as you, the, the acid is less dense than the water in which it sits. Unless you mix it up, then the acid tends to separate out in components from the water or something. Um, and you get corrosion at the bottom of the plates of the battery, is the point. I haven't got a charger that does equalisation. The only way I have of equalising these batteries is by using the solar stuff that I've got, uh, that I've never put together. Um, so this is today's... I'm in some agony uh, with just sort of thinking, oh, I have not maintained my batteries sufficiently well for them to still be batteries and that they probably might not work anymore. Um, so I've got a Victron Blue Solar 1715, 15, 15 MPPT charge controller. I've got some solar panels to go on it. Uh, I've got some wire um, and I've got a Bluetooth dongle as well. Uh, so, uh, what I will do is put together the solar system with a charge controller. Um, the batteries are fully charged now, top them up with distilled water now, um, and then equalize them using the MPPT. This is the only thing that I've got that will do it. Um, and then use the electric motor that I've got to discharge them and measure how much capacity they've got and then maybe do it again and then see if we've still got some batteries. Because if I haven't still got some batteries then 
I will rethink the entire electric situation you know based on the technology that we're talking about now seven years later in terms of um, uh, lithium lithium battery storage probably now it will be a very different story now we've got electric cars and mass production and gigafactories and what have you it's going to be a very different story now to what it was in 2013 uh, in 2020 so I see if I still got some batteries. If I've still got some batteries, I shan't worry about it. I'll just use them. If I haven't got some batteries, then we'll start thinking about all sorts of other possibilities. Um, but there you are. Right, I shall set to it. I shall set to it. Super Saturday. Workshop Saturday. Whatever it is. Well, so it's, it's a change from my field. I'm stressed that I'm not getting on with doing sanding and things, but it needs this needs doing, so I shall do it on. I shall get on with it. Right. <laughs> well, after a little bit of shouting, a couple of visits to the shop, <clears throat> um, I've got some solar panels, these two, 12 volt panels that I have for the 12 volt system really, but two 12 volt, 24 volt panels, so they're generating about 40 volts uh, connected to the uh, Victron MPPT with the Bluetooth dongle, uh, which is working with the app, but I can't show you that obviously because I've got the phone in my hand, uh, connected to the batteries. Um, good. So tomorrow, when we've actually got, it's the end of the day now, uh, tomorrow we've got some actual sunshine. Um, I can float, no, I can do an equalisation charge um, on the batteries and the battery the cells uh, good <laughs> it's not my forte oops it's not my forte anyway got it done good this is fun <laughs> uh, right I've woken up uh, it's about midday the sunshine is uh, it's behind high overcast uh, clouds we've got about 0.6 of an amp, 15 watts. Um, so I'm cleaning the panels. Scrubbing them down, see if that makes a difference. Well, it didn't take me that long to clean them, and they didn't look that dirty. Um, I think they look cleaner now. Um, I've noticed that there's one of the cells here has got a there's something a bit funky going on with it. I can sort of see the crystals a bit more clearly now. As I say, it didn't take me that long to do it, and the sun hasn't moved that much out of the cloud. I'm getting 30 watts now. That's literally twice the twice the power I was getting when they were. Just a bit dusty. Yeah, twice the power. It didn't even look dirty. Extraordinary. This is very exciting. Making energy is really exciting. <laughs> I have to say, I'm excited. Yay. <laughs> uh. Well, it is a uh, it's a mournful morning. Oh dear. Well, I don't know. There was a there was a chick on the grass. I I mean maybe they. I don't know why, but and I pulled two more dead from the nest. I don't know. They seem undamaged. I don't know whether they. I don't know whether the parents dragged out the one that was on the lawn. Um, I don't know. Anyway, uh, and tragic is, um, 
you know, when 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 a design dies as well. <laughs> um, just looking at these uh, solar panels then. Uh, I got them in the full sun, and they're doing about 30 watt uh, in the conditions we've got here, uh, which isn't great. Um, but you know, if if I move one, I move this panel so it's not quite in the full sun. So you know, back to there. The output drops off to about 5 watts um, in comparison to how it is just there. Um, and if I shade it as well, so if I like shade that much, that's enough to knock it down to 5 watts as well. So it's the kind of the idea of having one panel on one side and the other on the other is no good at all. Um, Uh, it's no good at all, unless um, with a 12 volt system, with them not in series, that shadowing over a second panel uh, isn't quite such an issue. But it does seem that you know any kind of unless you've actually got the panels completely, totally exposed, they aren't going to work properly at all. Like. To a like a to almost total degree, they're not going to work. Um, so where people have them on uh, platforms at the back, like the same like uh, Hugo has, same in Frenchman, and that seems sensible. And all this having them on cabin tops and under booms and rigging, and you're just not going to see any output at all. Nothing meaningful. So. Uh, Okay, rethink there, and uh, I've still got one check in there. Uh, so, a rethinking for all of us, really, in the garden today. There you are. Lovely. <laughs> it's been so lovely, honestly, since this, since that thing, which is now over. Lockdown was, it feels like a different country now. Uh, right, I've had these panels for just longer than I can think, like three years. <clears throat> so to be wiring them up is uh, filling me with some joy, let me tell you. Is uh, Right, so we established that the 12 volt panels are not sufficient for equalising or really providing any meaningful energy um, other than, you know, background power to radios and very low energy lights and what have you so they're in the shade at the moment because I'm wiring them up but um, so right I've got some fat wire this is 8 gauge wire from the uh, Marston car audio for its proper you know like oxygen free silver plated I don't know proper power cable uh, and it's quite big because it's quite long I want some flexibility about how these are wired up, particularly um, here. Um, particularly here. Right, so how are they working out? They're working out, because the cable's so fat, um, and I think probably it would be in like this anyway, is once they're crimped, the, uh, the connectors are too fat to get down the hole for this terminal, screw terminal, um, ring connector, screw terminal. So we've just got this Loose like a little heart. It's like a little heart. Um, so that gives some latitude for strain relief, and they get held with these glands. In any case, waterproof glands. So um, wiring up in series. So black goes to the far end, and then the red comes back through the panels. Um, and when I turn them around, so what these are is, these are 75 watt panels. Uh, these little ones are only 40 watts. So that should have been generating 80 watts and we were getting about 30 out of it. So I don't know whether the panels were deficient or, um, you know, degraded, but uh, uh, these ones are new. Um, I bought them off eBay secondhand, but new in their boxes. Um, so we shall see what comes out of them. Good. Wiring them up.
Right, okay, so some things that we didn't see, I did just put some Vaseline on each of the connectors. Um, but before I hook this up, so we've got three solar panels outside, they're wired in series, and these are the ends of the wires. Uh, what I want to do now is connect them to the, um, uh, to the solar uh, regulator. Oh look, they're in shade. Okay, but I just tested this. It's really important with all this stuff is just to be so careful. Uh, with electrics, it really is. Is there's a 50 volt potential difference in these wires now? Um, so I'm going to put the solar panels flat on the grass, see if that knocks it off. Um, and also, you know, just to say, you know, this is not ideal to have a shelf above these batteries, but I've got this deflector shield because between these two contact points. Uh, is a fire waiting to happen or a serious electrical shock. Serious. Um, you know, there's a heck of a loss of current in those batteries. Really, really serious, okay? Um, and if you've ever been driving a Mini uh, with your tool bag in the boot and a spanner has welded itself to the, uh, to the battery and smoke starts coming through the speaker holes in the parcel shelf, you will have a great deal of respect for electrics and uh, lead acid batteries. <laughs> scary moment man, scary moment. Right, good, carry on. Right, safety announcement part two. Uh, yeah, the battery is in the boot of a Mini and so is the fuel tank. Um, right, I've just taken off this 12 volt setup that I had there. I was just using a very thin gauge for the charging wire. I'm going to do the full Eight, no, it's 10 AWG, 10 gauge wire, <clears throat> which is super overkill to connect the solar charger to the um, to the batteries, but I feel more confident than having this sort of, it's just twin and earth I'm using there. So I'll probably hook this back up again, but all with the 12 volt system and then test that independently. I just want to get this 24 volt system up and running. Um, so where I'm going to leave this, I've got the solar panels off, so in the dark, um, and so where I leave it, the I've got them joined in parallel there, you see at the end. I'm going to tape the, uh, the one of the wires back to itself so it can't possibly connect through when it's in storage, because, you know, these, as I say, it's a fire if you get a little arc there, because it's, you know, 30 watts, I mean, 30 watts, I mean, it's not much. But, no arcs, please. Just tape this back to itself. Good. Um, and in terms of connections, I'm not going to fill this because I'd have to go inside to get my thing. Um, to connect the solar regulator, uh, we go load first, then panels. Uh, so batteries, no, not load, um, batteries first, which tells the regulator what voltage it needs to be operating at, and then you put the panels on. That's the way around. So right, I'm going to make up a little charging cable and fix this all together. <laughs> right, can you tell this makes me nervous? <laughs> These little clips. Um, it, just a really good top tip. Um, old chisel. I cut through these wires, give it a really good hit um, into a soft block um, to cut these wires. They're very prone to, well they're very difficult to cut because they're multi-stranded. Um, if you try and cut them with a pair of scissors or a, a pair of pliers you end up with an absolute nightmare trying to get through each of the individual strands. So if you give it a good whack with a chisel it just goes straight through. It's very good. Blue tits! Oh yeah, blue tit news! Um, squeakering. We've got squeakering at the hole. Let's see if we can see them. Uh, so where I thought we only had one chick and I pulled some dead ones out. Ugh is um there are actually two at least some tweetering maybe they're getting sleepy for the end of the day yeah so we've got two chicks and they're up on their feet and tweetering at the hole so they will fledge hopefully in the next few days good Tit news. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, safety announcement four. Um, I mean, I was I wasn't about to do it, but I'm thinking what I'm doing, and I could quite easily have have done this the wrong way around because what I am doing is I am connecting batteries to the solar regulator. So just in terms of the language, and it's the way I started to think about it, I was going to put the battery connectors on and then put them into the solar regulator because I'm connecting the batteries to the regulator. But if I connect this to the batteries, I will have two live terminals there. And you could do welding with these two terminals if they're free and loose. So super, super real think about this. So it's it can go really wrong. Um, it's connect the cables to the regulator and connect the cables to the battery. Very good. Okay. Well, I mean, I'll admit to a... It's all connected. I'll admit to a schoolboy error there. Because <laughs> I didn't check the polarity of the panels so that the... Um, I mean, it makes no real odds, but... The red wire is the negative, and the black wire is the positive. Anyway, so just them panels there set up in the shade, basically. That's 56 volts. The max open circuit for these three panels together is 63. So that's within the 75 limit of the solar regulator. Um, and the solar regulator, what the solar regulator does is it converts the power coming off the panels into the ideal power to charge the batteries. So it's charging the batteries at 27 volts, 28 volts, um, and an amp. Actually what is coming off the panels is 56 volts and half an amp. Uh, so we shall see tomorrow. I'll set these up so they're... This is... The sun only gets to this place very late in the day, um, but it's all connected, so tomorrow we should be generating, i just check the panel, oh yeah, 75, each one of these is a 75 watt panel, um, so that should be 150, 225, so we might be getting something like 150 watts, because it's nearly midsummer in the United Kingdom, uh, it's towards the end of May. Uh, we should be getting some proper, proper power off these, um, and we'll check that tomorrow. All right. Nobody died. Nobody died. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? That's fizzing. Very happy. Good. That is... <laughs> I'm scared they're going to explode. Okay, well that's... The solar panels outside are producing 115 um, watts. Um, and that has triggered an equalisation charge. I think it might have just finished. Um, this battery charger only does it for an hour at a time. But that is, it sounds like a, it sounds like a shower of rain. But yeah, bubbles, bubbling, bubbling, and sometimes big bubbles uh, from the batteries there. So that's mixing the acid in the cells. Um, and when they've settled down, I can have a look with the uh, uh, hygrometer. Uh, to measure the density uh, to see what's happened but uh, oh god I switched a light I shouldn't have done that because it's an explosive gas I mean I've got a um, I've got a vent in the roof um, in any case and hydrogen which is the it's hydrogen sulfide or something the gas comes off the batteries whilst they're equalizing um, it's very very light and floats up and will have gone out of the vent, but uh, still sparks um, in this environment is not a good thing.
I stopped. I can't work it out. So the tits are still in the tube, in the in the flagpole. They're still there. So this week I've got the solar panels rigged to the battery and today we've got an equalization charge on the batteries so I can no longer have to worry about the maintenance of the condition of the batteries. But in order to establish whether they still have capacity, I need to run them down. And this is what I've run into today, is uh, to plug an inverter onto the batteries to make 240 volts out of 24 volts. We start talking about earthing, we start talking about AC current, and we start really getting into some very complicated territory, which isn't very well explained by anybody on YouTube, which is a disaster. <laughs> so, Part two will be answering the questions to which I cannot find the answer about earth bonding, uh, shore power, um, and uh, all all those questions which I've run into today, which I just almost like, what? I do not understand. Ah. So there you are. Thank you for watching. Look forward to part two. Very good.